Here at the Cannes Yachting Festival, Serena has a lot of boats on display. We've got the flagship of its trawler style line, the 88. We've got the smaller 78, and we also have the 68. There is a 58 in the line, but what we're here to see is a new baby of the range, and that is this, the new Serena 48. While we're waiting to leave, it's worth having a little look at the engines here. Now this is a pair of Cummins 550s operating through V-Drive. So they're nice and compact, there's loads of space down here for everything else you need for an extended cruise. There's also the option of some Volvo Penta D11 670s. So certainly, given that this is the lower power option, and slightly overweight. We're not expecting much in the way of performance, but this is not, of course, a performance boat. It uses a semi-displacement hull. So it's more about relaxed, refined family cruising than outright performance. Now we're using V-drives down there, so there's loads of space in that engine bay for all the additional stuff you might want for an extended cruise. And given that the bulkhead for that engine bay finishes a good way aft, it's reasonable to expect a decent bit of refinement inside this wheelhouse. Now we see this a huge amount uh, these days. People tend to avoid the aft benches that block your view. So these are facing benches for big views, again a glass parapet. This has become relatively formulaic over the last couple of years. If I move around to the side, you see we've got a side gate here. We also got a side gate on the other side, so that's all pretty standard for a boat like this. And when I say like this, a kind of trawler style yacht, as you can see, the upper deck comes right out over these side decks for a bit of extra protection. This is nice though, the Serena logo on a panel of glass. We'll move forward. Obviously we've got a skipper's door here as well. Practicality is well taken care of and there's the lower helm. Very serious workmanlike station that is. Up a couple of steps onto the bow and here we've got an enormously long set of sunbeds and a forward facing seat. A bench seat for perhaps three or four people with cup holders. Plenty of space for your seamanship duties up front. But I can't help thinking, given the length of that sunbed, that maybe they could have shifted the bench a little aft, got involved in a little bit of convertible furniture and had facing seats at the front here. There certainly seems to be the space for it, but the layout here is relatively simplistic. Pleasant, but relatively simplistic. You have natural teak on top of the gunnels there, plus good sturdy elevated rails. We can't really make our way down that side because it's full of fenders, so we'll pop it back down the uh, starboard side again. More of these little cylindrical automatic lights, again, things that we see on various boats these days. Uh, but what I like is we've got the uh, speakers up here for music, plus a fusion remote, so you can control your music independently up front. And let's pop into this saloon by the skipper's side door and take a look at this while they're helming up top. And what we have here is space for two people. Also got a couple of plotters sitting proud of the dash platform. And that's relatively low level. So this nice big vertical screen, even though we've got a big strut in the middle, visibility, as you can see, is really very good indeed. So is headroom actually. It feels really quite lofty in here quite bright, which is not always the case with flybridge equipped cruisers, particularly at this forward end of the saloon where the helm sits. If I look to the side, it's not an especially sociable helm station because the seating in the main part of the saloon sits aft of that. But what we have in here is a nice big C-shaped dinette on the port side. It looks very much like that it can be dropped down into the space. And after that, again, in a relatively conventional fashion, we have an aft galley that looks out onto this aft cockpit. I would assume these are three-part sliding doors so you can shift them across to the starboard side and properly open up this galley to that aft cockpit. 
but this is quite nicely arranged if again slightly formulaic because we have the refrigeration on the starboard side that's all nicely taken care of and very very attractively fitted out these pale woods are, are very neat and it feels quite pared back and linear very clean there's no fuss here the galley itself has a four ring induction hob plus an oven down below some high level storage up there and a handy opening window here so you can get rid of the steam and smells down below the sink a bit of storage and there a dishwasher on the starboard side plus what looks to me like a champagne cooler built into the worktop and a nice big stainless steel sink quite a low profile partition between this section and the dinette but in truth the cooking takes place further up so that's not a problem at all well the skipper of the new Serena 48 seems to be chasing a helicopter in pursuit of some nice marketing shots so what we're going to do is just pop up and carry on the tour up here on the flyway now as you can see another two-man helm this time on the port side which makes loads of sense in terms of seamanship maneuvers when you're coming alongside there's a helicopter ruining my video it's quite nice to see though that ahead of this helm we've got a nice big wraparound lounging area really accommodating that as you can see you could probably fit five or six people in there maybe even more what i also like is this that's a big thick central strut to hold up this hard top and that means we only need these really narrow gauge stainless steel struts elsewhere so the views all round here are absolutely fantastic as you can see now at the aft end of this fly bridge we have a nice big wide wrap around the team with a pair of tables they both fold into the center so you can have an unbroken table right the way across and i reckon you could fit at least six seven eight people there and just ahead of that this makes plenty of sense is the transverse wet bar now as you would expect we have an electric griddle under there plus a sink and down below plenty of space for storage or else for the optional ice maker and fridge there's also a really handy grab handle here so you can make your way between the forward section and the aft section very safely and securely even when you're at sea down below this trawler style hull with its relatively vertical sides really pays dividends in terms of volume now this is a three cabin layout so there's plenty of space for everybody up in the V of the bow for instance there's absolutely no taper at all necessary for the VIP double you got good hole windows there too as well as opening portholes on both sides we've got no kind of skylights or windows or hatches onto that foredeck there which is a bit of a shame but we do have plenty of storage interesting mix of wood styles here and some really attractive curves actually here and in particular up here above the head end of the bed that's very attractive indeed the ensuite facilities are on the port side and they're particularly generous this of course operates as a day head as you can see from that door that opens up into the central corridor plenty of space and headroom in there not much in the way of natural light but we do get a nice flush mounted rain shower in there and a little seat as well for a more relaxed shower decent bit of storage it's a very nicely put together day heads now of course on the starboard side we have a guest twin and I like the fact that it's quite deep set you see you take a, a step down here which means that in the main body of this cabin I've, I can only just reach the ceiling it's absolutely huge so changing is no problem at all in here and from bed level even though the windows are relatively small the views are good and we have ventilation too plus more full height hanging storage and a little remote so you can control the ambient temperature now another couple of steps down we head aft and we find the most impressive section on this lower deck which is of course the owner's cabin 
Now look at that on the starboard side. It's absolutely massive for a boat of this scale. We have a TV built onto that forward bulkhead and below that a neat little dressing table. A nice long chaise long there. That's got to be in excess of six feet. Plus some really attractive built-in storage. More of these curves and more of this kind of two-tone wood that we see elsewhere on the boat. That is easily a king-size bed. It actually seems slightly larger than that to me. And on the port side, uh, a big storage cabinet. Good size of window there, but the one on the starboard side is absolutely vast because, of course, that takes full advantage of that whole window. Here, that whole window is cut short because on the port side, we have the ensuite facilities, which broadly mirror the day heads. That's not to say that they're in any way less impressive than you expect. It's simply that the day heads is more impressive than you expect. Let's just shut that door over and open up this cabinet down here because you kind of expect a washing machine and that's exactly what we get. This is after all a proper cruising boat designed to be taken away in comfort for weeks at a time. So we come to the uh, upper helm because obviously the flybridge is the place to be on this boat in this place. As I say, we are a little bit overweight, a couple of tons, and we do have the slightly more relaxed engine option with the Cummins 550s. And this is a semi-displacement hull. So we're not expecting great things in terms of performance. When you're up here though, the moment you get underway, in the absence of a proper dedicated wind deflector, all we have is our plotters here, a little bank of those, plus that extended sunbathing platform that goes forward. You certainly feel like you're up on a flybridge, there's plenty of wind. As you'd expect from Serena, it's no stranger to efficient running semi-displacement holes. So at 10 knots, we're seeing six litres per nautical mile. And we have a combined 1,900 litres of capacity here. So with a bit of a safety margin in reserve, 1,500 litres. So that's a really useful range, even when we push on to 20 knots. Well, at that speed, we're doing 10 litres per nautical mile. So still, 150 nautical miles, no problem at all. And as anticipated, it is actually relatively refined down in that wheelhouse on the lower deck. And 20 knots sound readings in the region of 73 decibels, so they of course dip when you're at regular sensible cruising speed. So we'll pull her back into uh, sensible cruising speed, 10 to 12 knots. perhaps 15 knots where you really want to be. And at that speed, everything is very, very easy. I do find myself, though, as the man at the helm, not sitting over on the starboard side of this bench, which is essentially my position because it's a two-man bench. I find myself moving over into the centre of it. So realistically, I don't want anyone else sitting alongside me here. I don't feel like there's room for that. Down here at the lower helm, it's great that we've got this skipper's side door. Good for seamanship practicalities, of course, but brilliant for a through draft with those aft doors open as well. As I say, visibility is also really excellent. I might be inclined to do away with the curtains on the, the port side and use blinds instead for better visibility. But uh, there's nothing to complain about here, particularly given that we've got a flybridge up top. This is uncommonly wide open down at this helm. Now, refinement, as I say, is pretty good down here. Quite quiet when you're underway. I'll sacrifice a bit of that for that draft. In terms of the helm position, it's actually, I would say, slightly better than up top in some ways. I mean, I can actually position myself on the right-hand side here and leave a bit of space for the person to the left of me. There is a bolster here. It's a one-piece bolster. So if I choose to stand like this and the person next to me 
has no choice but to stand, which could potentially cause a few arguments between me and my partner. And there's actually a decent gap here. I find myself reaching slightly forward for these throttles. So let's pull this bolster down and see how that is. I reckon in the sitting position, if you're going long distance and you're just taking it easy and relaxing, this is pretty decent. But I would like a foot brace too, to increase the comfort down here. Now, as I say, this is the prototype model of this new boat, so it's a little bit heavy, and there's also no stabilisation. There are no fins, no sea keeper. Plus, when we were out, we had nine people up top on the flybridge, so there's a bit of wallowing. Um, there's a bit of a delay as it regains its natural trim when you come out of a turn, and also, actually, in terms of range. Well, this is designed and built um, in precisely the way it looks. This is an accommodating, refined, long-distance family cruiser. Uh, so a range of 250 nautical miles at 10 knots and 150 at 20 knots could be deemed a little bit short. But look, this is the smallest boat in the modern Serena fleet. This is the 48. They also do a 58, a 68, a 78, and an 88. And they also have a heritage in super yachts. So they absolutely know what they're doing with this style of boat. So yes, the prototype might be a touch heavy, but it already has the hallmarks of a boat that's going to do extremely well. Thank you.